This is Sean Peck from Cage and Death Dealer. This is Stacy Savage of Savage Master. What's up? It's Murphy from War Curse. Hi, this is Ida from Trisphere. Hey, this is Reese Scruggs from Havoc, and you're listening to the Great Metal Debate Podcast. Hold on. Podcast listeners to the Great Metal Debate. Welcome to the night because I'm here with Jarvis Leatherby of Heavy Metal Warriors Night Demon. Jarvis, thanks so much for joining us on the Great Metal Debate. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. So we're here in Atlanta, Georgia, a place I haven't been to for a show in uh, many years. In the second week of Night Demon's tour of the eastern U.S. on a bill with metal legends Anvil and -and up-and-comers Grave Shadow, how has this run of shows been? Oh, it's been really good. Um, I'm pleasantly surprised to see a lot of our fans coming out. Um, you know, usually you're on support tours to uh, kind of spread the word about what you got to some other fans, you know, which is happening as well. But uh, but it's good. I think we've done enough out here. So we've definitely seen that, that influx of people coming in. Um, so it's good to just feel that we're adding something to it, you know. But it's good. We've known the Anvil guys for a long time, and we're buddies. You guys have been on a tour with them before? A short run on the West Coast, yeah. But we've talked for a long time, and uh, it's it was cool that they asked us to come out and do this with them. Well, I know you guys have been touring a ton. You toured the U.S. last year extensively, including a run with Carcass, Crowbar. Uh, also spent some time in Europe. How many days were you guys out on the road last year? Um, I don't know how many shows, but I would say probably seven months. Yeah, this year looks to be the same if not a little bit more, actually. Um, yeah, we just got back from South America. And we had, so I think between, like, the first of the year and July, we're home, like, a total of two weeks in between that. We have a little bit of a break. Actually, no, sorry. September, I think, we get we get a little bit of a break. But uh, it's good stuff. You know, I mean, we have we have a new record to promote, so so that's, I mean, we have to be, we have to do it, you know. Is that kind of the ideal, to be out at least six months of the year at this point in your career? I think so. I mean, you kind of want to do a little bit less, I would think. But I mean, it's the, the, we're we're not really we don't really have the option to do that. You know, I mean, we do it for survival, and it's kind of like you know, people say like, "Hey, how do you avoid the day job?" It's just basically be gone long enough so nobody will even hire you. You know, really. Uh, you know, I mean, I mean that's how it is. Um, but no, no, we enjoy it. I mean, it is tough. It's pretty rough, but the shows are what's what makes it all worth it you know getting up there to perform so we don't carry any baggage over on stage and 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 you know if 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 things weren't going so well and and you know we weren't we weren't continuing to grow and our audience wasn't growing i think we'd rethink the whole thing you know but uh but that's not the case so it's good so so we're, we're in good we're in a good spot now, man, I'll admit my age. I was in high school in the 80s. When I listen to Night Demon, I think that your music, it fits with music from that era. But I don't think you all sound retro. Uh, to me, it's more like it's modern metal, but in the classic metal style. Does that sound right to you? I mean, that's great. That I mean, I, I like that somebody else is saying that. You know, I mean, I people... I'm cool with whatever label anybody wants to give us, honestly. If that's what they feel from it, then that's accurate, you know, from their point of view. We've gotten a lot of different stuff, you know. But uh, um, the thing is, is that, you know, obviously we're heavily influenced by the new wave of British heavy metal, early 80s, late 70s kind of, 70s rock and stuff. Um, But we... I guess had have the advantage of, of growing up and through through other times so where you know we we were like we grew up on like thrash metal and like punk rock and hardcore punk and stuff like that and so um, we've lived through those eras so you have to be influenced by a little bit of that too you know so I think there's a lot of things especially like going back to our first EP that you know it, some some people that heard it thought that it was a really a band from from back then you know um but it was like oh this was ahead of its time because listen to this part you know it's like right uh but i think that's the advantage of being able to like to to live through different eras of, of and subgenres of hard rock and and yeah, again i mean you just it, it's it, it's unavoidable to be to be influenced by by certain things that had happened after a certain period, time period of music that you may love the the most, you know, yeah. So, 
Um, so yeah, I think that's a, I mean, that's cool. I mean, I'd like to think of us as, as not just a throwback, you know? Um, so I'll take that. <laughs> well, let's talk about the new album, Darkness Remains, due out on April 21st. Right. Yeah, that's correct. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been a couple of years. We purposely did that, though. I mean, we really wanted to, Curse of the Dam was doing so well, and it got a lot of great reviews, and got album of the year, five different publications, and we just, you know, we toured the States a couple times uh, as a support act. We did we did a couple headlining tours on it as well, um, as well as Europe, two, two really long tours of Europe. We did Mexico twice on it. We went to South America. So we just, we didn't really want to be a band that, that got discovered on 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 a global level even in the underground um on like you know our fourth or fifth release you know i mean we really wanted to we thought we had a good al good enough album to go out there and and really let it let it sit you know a lot of the hardcore fans are like waiting waiting you know i get that um a lot of newer bands release an album a year um veteran bands it looks like they're doing like three to five on average these days um, two years for us is good. I don't think it'll take two years for the next one. Um, but we really got ourselves cemented where we, where we wanted to be to, to launch this album. You know, I mean, there's so many bands that I discovered later on that when they became popular, you know, they have this whole back catalog of, great, of stuff that's even better, honestly, you know. I think, I'm not going to say we've written the best stuff we're going to, but I mean, I would put up the first songs we wrote against anything. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I feel that confident about them. We knew it at the time, too. So, um, um, you know, and we still play those songs live, and, and we still want to be able to to share that with the audience, you know, before getting ahead of ourselves, you know, I mean, that's just going to, it will happen. You know, you're always going to pick up new fans, like at some point in your career, but, but, um, I wanted our fans to have this time, you know, where they were really fully, uh, engulfed in, in, into the, the, the lore of the band and what we were doing at the time and the tours and the records and, and experiencing that as it was happening and getting another chance to experience it before it went away. You know, so doing a couple, doing multiple tours and coming back and stuff. And then, you know, our last U.S. headlining tour for it, we played the whole record. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, it was cool. I, people got familiarized with it and, and kept coming back. So it, it was a good decision on our part. You've talked about how your debut full length, Curse of the Damned, was recorded using a very live in the studio approach. Did you change up that process for this follow-up album? No, not at all. Actually, we stripped it down a little, even a little more. I mean, there's no rhythm tracks underneath the guitar solos or anything, uh, but we concentrated more on the sounds this time around. You know, to make, to get that a, a fuller sound that we do live. You know, with just with just three pieces. You know, um, did you do it in three days again? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I think it was like ten. But, but uh, yeah, yeah. We were doing a lot of writing, too, in there, you know. With the other record, I mean, with Curse of the Dam, we, we actually spent three months in pre-production for it. And, you know, there's two versions. There's, there's you know, there's a, there's a much higher production version of, of that album that we still have. But for the 25th anniversary tour, you're going to release that. Hopefully not even that long. But, yeah, some, and some deluxe edition will come out someday. We'll have that on there. Yeah. Lyrically, have the themes changed at all in this album? Not really. Not too much. I think there's some more concepts on it. Like, uh, we have a trilogy of songs that tell a story, you know. So, I mean, it's a little more in-depth like that. But the themes are definitely the same. Evil, darkness, heavy metal, cliche, whatever you want to call it, you know. The classics. Yeah, you know, stuff that we like and stuff that the audience likes, you know. Another thing that's remained the same between your albums is your preference for compact songs, typically just three or four minutes in length. It isn't uncommon to have metal bands today. I was just listening to the Vector album coming down here, you know, uh, songs that are 12 or more minutes long. What's your thought process behind that? Um, you know, I guess to, it goes both ways. The first of all, I don't know if I've ever been uh, had creative of enough spark to, to write something long, you know, that's interesting at least, without milking the hook or, or repeating yourself. You know, I think a lot of songs repeat themselves and that's the what I you know, I don't see a need for a third verse a lot of times, you know, if I can say what I wanna say. Um uh you know, and also another thing is we 
you know, I, I go see some of my favorite bands and, and watch them for two hours and they play 12 songs, you know, and it's like we want to be able to, to perform as many as we can within a live setting, you know. I mean, even as a support act, we're able to play nine or ten songs. Um, and it's just, I don't know, I think it's just our style of writing. I mean, it's like get in and get out, like to get your point across, you know. Again, if I had something more to say, if there was something else happening there, I think it would be longer just out of necessity. But, you know, you can't rule out someday having the 12 minute opus from Night Demon. No, I mean, I can't rule I can't rule that out. But but if I did that, I'd maybe just want to do it like one side of an album. You know, I mean, I like short records. This one's coming in at like 38 minutes. And I think it's, it's fine. You know, it's it's I think a lot of albums are just too long. You know, um, I mean, there's 10 tracks on it. You know, so, yeah. Now, Night Demon is a trio with you performing vocals, playing bass, plus a guitarist and drummer. There are economic advantages to having a trio, but what was it that made you guys decide on that lineup? Complete necessity. We wanted a second guitar player, but we just couldn't find the right guy. Um, Armand, who's our guitar player now, we asked him, actually, to, to, to be second guitarist, but he was busy with other things. Sure enough, he ended up in the band when Brent left, you know, but... Uh, uh, that's really what it was. It was just necessity. But there's a beauty in that because, um, like, you know, we have signature stuff now. Like, we do harmonizing with the guitar and the bass, and my bass sound has 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 become its own thing to fill those gaps. And I don't want to say we're innovative, um, but there's things that have become a signature of the band that that with just you know with the pieces we had we had to make the best of what that was and use what we had and think a little bit outside of the box so it's been a real blessing and i've never i mean people always ask about not so much these days but they used to like have you ever thought about a second guitar player and all this but we've never really had complaints that like oh we need a second guitar player i think it'd be too overbearing i think it'd be too much for us you know we'd be too we're already so loud you know so i don't yeah well look at anvil and raven i mean there are a lot of bands who are able to pull that off and from a fan perspective you're not missing anything yeah i mean i think so there's a lot of bands that can't pull it off though you know and and i think you do miss something you know um the lack of power you know or fullness um I never liked three pieces growing up. I don't know why. I, I just, I think I was in a three piece band and I didn't like that. I always wanted a second guitar player, but now I, I love it. You know, I and mean, you talk about economically, yeah, okay, but, but I would never. I mean, really, what it affords us is to be able to pay more crew guys. You know, I mean, we have. We bring our own lighting to the shows, and and we we have somebody run it manually. You know, we have to have a merchandise seller. We have to have we have to have parts to the show. You know, I mean, Rocky, our mascot, comes out on stage. You know, so we we have other guys involved, just because they're not always on stage. You know, I mean, it takes an army to build like the right show. You know, and we're always thinking about upping our game on that. We're always trying to trying to outdo the next. You know. Um, I don't like the less is more approach. I don't. I don't like too over the top either. You know, there's a fine line between what's cheesy and what's, you know, what's excessive. At least I should say, and what's cool. Um, but I mean, we're here to we, we're here to deliver some kind of uh, uh, some good visuals too. You know, as well as our our stage performance is pretty energetic. You know? I'm glad to hear we've got the mascot on stage tonight. Looking forward to that, man. Well, starting to wrap up with you, Jarvis, after this current tour with Anvil is complete, what are your plans for the remainder of 2017? Um, we have one week off after this tour, and we're headed to Europe. So April 20th to June 4th, we're playing like 10 festivals and a bunch of club dates in between. June, We come back uh, middle of June. We go to New York to do the Defenders of the Old Festival. Um, and then like late July to late August, we're back in Europe for festivals. Um, and we have, a, you know, I don't know. Anything could happen. Like, I mean, more stuff can come up, you know, in the, in the fall. 
but we're hosting our festival, Frost and Fire, in Ventura, California, which happens every October. It's a traditional metal festival, very European style. Um, so, and where is that located? It's in Ventura, California. Yeah, it's in the downtown area. So, frostandfirefest.com. You can get all the info on that. So yeah, and then I'm sure we'll do another support tour by the end of the year in the states. I see that happening. So, sounds like a full year for you guys promoting this new album. So, tell fans how they can support you by purchasing music and merchandise, in particular. This new album, Darkness Remains. Yes, um, nightdemon.net. That's just the best way. There's links to everything on there. You know, you just click on shop. It'll take you to the – we have a European store and, 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 and a domestic store. So, um, yeah, nightdemon.net. You can find information about the festival, too, everything. It's the hub for everything. Awesome. Well, Jarvis, I'm so stoked to see you guys tonight. Can't wait for it. Uh, get the ritual going, man. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks so much. We'll be playing that song tonight, too. So – Cheers. Thanks a lot.